Hi, and welcome back to the New Frontier Playbook. My name is Scott Phillips, and I'm your host on this channel. Uh, and this is episode three on our econ track, where we describe the contours of what a market economy in space looks like. Now, hopefully you've seen episode one, which talks about the difference between a market economy and an astronaut economy. A uh, market economy is where costs set prices and wages have to reflect prices. Um, our second episode was really talking about price check. What does a cup of coffee cost in space? Just to give you an illustration of how much more expensive things could be in space in a market economy compared to on Earth. Now we're going to talk about in aggregate what that economy, that market economy, looks like in space and what are its defining features and why it's so much more expensive. Again, we call that economy an economic conjugate. And I took that term, it may not be the right economic term, but I took it from verb tenses. Uh, and I think of the economy on Earth as a single tense and the economy in space as a plural tense. So what does that plural tense look like? Why is it so much more expensive? Let's go ahead and jump right in and, and describe sort of the two major underlying factors that cause a market economy in space to be so much more expensive than the one on here on Earth. The first point is the case for water. Water is going to be a huge expense in space if you have, as people like Jeff Bezos say, millions of people living and working in space, or Elon Musk, who talks about a million living on Mars. You need water for everything. You need water for you know drinking and surviving. Uh, you need it to grow all the food you're going to eat. Uh, and you need it for most, or if not all, industrial processes in one form or another. So you need it, a lot of it if you're going to support a large population in space. Now on Earth, we kind of are spoiled. We have a beautiful planet with a great environment still. Hopefully it'll be for the long term. Uh, and water falls from the sky and it flows by in rivers and streams. And we're literally able to collect it, process it, and distribute it to homes in most places on the planet for pennies to the gallon. That's huge. In space, it's going to be very expensive and very different. There's no freshwater body or lake sitting in space where we would put a settlement for many, many people. So you have to bring water either from Earth, or you have to collect, process it, and ship it from the moon, or the same with asteroids. None of those options are cheap, easy, uh, or cer and certainly not free. They're going to be expensive. And so the cost of water is going to be 10 to 100 times, maybe a lot more, more expensive than on Earth. It's just there's no way around it. The same goes for the air we breathe. You kind of get used to it. We don't have to pay for the air we breathe, thankfully. Uh, it's free everywhere, maybe more limited up high on the top of Mount Everest, but where people live, you can breathe for free. Air is basically oxygen, 21%, nitrogen, 78%, and then a bunch of trace gases, CO2, other things. And again, on Earth, it's already there. We use it for free uh, in space. You're going to have to bring all those gases in some form up from Earth or process it and ship it from the moon or from asteroids or some other source. And then you're going to have to process it, you know, mix it, uh, produce it, and maintain it if you're going to really have a population living in space in large numbers. And so from free to something that you have to manage and process and collect and distribute, etc., means that the air we breathe is going to be 10 to 100 times more expensive. And that cost has to be factored into a market economy for everything else. So that's why we say that the cost of a market economy in space is going to be exponentially higher than it is on Earth. There's no way around it. So the question we have to ask is, is this a feature or a bug? Is it a showstopper? Does this mean we can't go into space in large scale? Well, I think I'm in fairly good company. People like Jeff Bezos and NASA and people for the last 50 years have been saying, no, we can do this, and it's technically possible. The question that we're proposing is, is it economically possible? Not technically, just the economic domain is what I'm focusing on with this, uh, this track. And I think there's encouraging uh, evidence to suggest that it is possible to have an economy at an exponentially higher price point, because we even have examples of them here on Earth. Uh, and we're going to go there next. We're going to talk about examples of economies that are conjugates on Earth, where in one location it's very low cost, and in another location it's exponentially higher. So let's go ahead and go there next. Uh, that'll be our next episode, Conjugates on Earth, uh, episode four on our econ track. Now, we're going to end here as we always do 
with an appeal for your help and support, mostly just free, stuff you can do for easy, e easily do. The first is subscribe to this channel. Uh, tell all your friends. The more traffic we get, the better we are at sharing out the ideas. The second is the content that is inspiring this video blog, this video series, is all out there for free on a WordPress site at newfrontierplaybook.com. So you can go out and read it for free. You can sign up for our email distribution list. There's no actual newsletter. Uh, if you sign up, it's really only for the purpose of me being able to convince a future publisher that yes, there are people that are interested and, and that's all. I won't be sharing the information. So it's free if you're kind and generous enough, please, uh, please go ahead and sign up. If you'd like to buy the author a beer, you're welcome to do that. We don't push that too much, but it would certainly be helpful. And then really, if anyone knows Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, uh, we would love to get them to write the foreword to an actual book called The New Frontier Playbook. Uh, pretty sure we could get this published pretty fast if that were the case. That's it. We're going to go ahead and move now to uh, episode four, Conjugates on Earth. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. Signing off.